Previously on The Bill. Hello, Margaret. What are you doing here? If I never clap eyes on that woman again, I would be so happy. Oh, you can't get my yes! How are you? Just spained it. Like it wasn't broken. It kept me in overnight for monitoring though, but I didn't have concussion. Oh, that's good. Well, I'm a survivor. Like you always said. Um, Margaret, it was clearly an accident, wasn't it? I was only trying to thank you for getting my job back. So what's so awful about this? We were such good friends. We are not friends, Margaret. We were, and, and we will be again once this is settled. I know why you push me. I didn't push you. You need to take these. The more involved you are with someone, you know, the more easily you fire off the handle with them. That's not what happened. Just tell the truth, Margaret. I've got a headache. I was unconscious. Gina, have you got the duty officer's report on the Margaret Barnes incident last night? Uh, yeah, she fell down the back stairs. Uh, kept her in hospital overnight, you know, just in case of uh, concussion. I understand there's some speculation over whether it was an accident or not. Yeah, I believe so. I've just not had a chance yet to... Uh... We need to be on top of this. I am on top of it. According to the report, when the paramedics turned up, Margaret Barnes said that Diaz de Costa pushed her. Right. We'll need to get a statement from her as soon as she's fit. See if she still thinks the same, or if she was just confused. If she is still alleging she was pushed, I'll have to run it as a criminal investigation. We should get Ramony and PC Valentine in now. If it does turn out to just be an accident at work, you'll need to deal with it, so you should be there when I talk to them. Sir. 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 Mom, they're two down on the late shift, so I'm working through, so's your mom. But you should have asked PC Harmon, you know. She didn't have any qualms about pulling a sickie for the last two days, did she? I have spoken to her, Mom. Yeah, and I'm going to have a few words with her myself when I get back. Um, from the hospital, you mean? Yeah, my appointment's not for another couple of hours, so if anyone wants me, I'll park the street. I still think you should go home afterwards. I mean, you're having chemo and radiotherapy, for God's sake. Yeah, but my oncologist said I might feel a bit queasy, that's all. I'm going to be fine. All right, but look, if there's anything I can help you out on... Thank you, Sergeant. I can manage on my own. Now, go on. Oh. Oh. Is this Mr. Carter? Excuse me. Do you know Mr. Carter? Yeah. PC Valentine's son, Hill. We're investigating his alleged assault. It happened in the shop earlier. Well, this will be the shop owned by Mr. Carter. That's right. You won't get much sense out of him. He's confused at the best of times, but they've got him doped up on painkillers. Are you a relative? No. I'm Angela Hardy. I work in a shop for him. Just wanted to make sure he was all right. And were you... Uh, miss... Mrs... Miss. Miss Hardy, were you there when the assault happened? Kind of. I was out back sorting stock. Look, I'm really sorry, but I've got to go and pick up my daughter. Then there's a delivery coming in half an hour. We need to ask you a few questions. Where can we find you? I'll be at the shop. Look, this will have to wait. The supervisor's back at the station. This is about Margaret Barnes. She's saying that I pushed her. You saw what happened. Uh, maybe we shouldn't discuss this. The super's bound to think we put our heads together about this anyway. I want to be able to say no. I am not trying to influence you. And I don't want to drop you in it, Sarge. Look, it's not going to make much difference what I say. It's Margaret's version the super's going to want to hear. Oh, 
It's about my daughter, Catherine. Like, this thing oh. raped her, and I want him arrested. She's a child. I don't know anybody called Catherine. Liar. I want you to calm down and back right off. All right? I haven't done anything. I haven't raped anybody. Liar! Oh. Shut up! Get off! Get off! I'm arresting you for breach of the peace. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. You do not make. Okay, what's your name, mate? Rob Langley. And how did this argument start? I was wiping the tables. He appeared from nowhere, kicked off, threatening me. I grab the cue to defend myself. And you say you don't know his daughter? No, he's talking complete garbage. Do I look like a rapist? I'll need an address. What happened last night? It was an accident. There's gossip all over the station. Oh, really? Is there? Yeah. Well, it was an accident, Terry, right? Margaret would not leave me alone. I turn round, I knock into her, and, and she's told the paramedics that I've pushed her. I take it you didn't talk to the superintendent last night about no. her behaviour? No. It's probably best that I didn't. What do you mean? Well, think about it. If I tell him that she's been hounding me at the station, following me around in her car all day, right, that she's probably nicked a police radio to try and keep tabs on me. But hey, I didn't push her. Why would I? OK. Maybe you should leave it, but you know what? You need to calm down. All right, I know. Of course I know. And you need to give a clear account to the superintendent about what's happened. You've got nothing to worry about. You've done nothing wrong. I have to go out. I'll be back soon. Fine, fine. You told the duty officer last night you made no apology for what happened. There was nothing to apologise for, sir. I bumped into Margaret. She fell. It must have been quite a bump to knock her down the stairs like that. I didn't push her. Then what happened? Well, Margaret was following me up the stairs, talking to me. And I didn't realise how close behind me she was. I turned round to answer her. And before I knew it, she'd fallen down the stairs. I mean, it happened so quickly. What was she talking to you about? Uh, she was trying to thank me for being so good to her. In what way? I don't know. I, I, uh, Margaret has developed this um, at attachment to me, I think. She seems to think that I look out for her. Not on this occasion, it would appear. So it was an accident. I'm, I'm really sorry about the fact that Margaret's injured, but there was nothing I could do. When we spoke yesterday, you told me yourself you felt overworked. Yeah, it was a tough day. Well, the VP is a very busy department. Perhaps the stress is beginning to get to you. With respect, sir, I know that I made mistakes with the investigation yesterday, but that has nothing to do with this. Whatever Margaret might say, I did not intend to harm her. I'm not saying you did. But if Margaret Barnes sticks to her story that you pushed her, this becomes a criminal investigation. So let's just hope PC Valentine can shed a little more light on the matter. Our uniform officers told us you made some very serious allegations against Mr Langley. This morning, my wife found a pregnancy testing kit in our daughter Catherine's room. Was it used? No. But Catherine was upset, you know, not herself. I managed to get the truth out of her. So she told you Rob Langley raped her? Not at first. But his name was in her address book and in the end she told me it was him. And she told you where he worked? So this rape, it took place when exactly? About six weeks ago. She said she met him when she was out bowling with some friends. He's a student at Sun Hill Art College. I'm, I'm sorry about what happened. I've just never felt so angry in my life. Never felt that kind of rage. I mean... She's only 13. She's still my baby. In your own words, tell me exactly what happened last night. Mom, I was heading past the sergeant's office. I 
heard voices from the back stairs. What kind of voices? Diesta Costa and Margaret Barnes. Were they arguing? I really couldn't say. Well, if you could hear them from the corridor, then their voices had to be raised. I suppose so, yes, sir. What were they saying? I'm not sure. All right, how about what you saw then? As I reached the bottom of the stairs, I saw both of them above me. The next thing I knew, Maggie, Margaret Barnes, had fallen. How? Was there a struggle? No, not a struggle, no. There might have been some contact, but... Uh... What kind of contact? PC Valentine. Did the Esther Costa push Mrs. Barnes? Look, I don't like doing this any more than you do. But covering for the sergeant isn't doing her any favors. It was an accident, sir. I'm sure it was. It all happened so fast. Just answer the question. From where you were standing, did Diesta Costa push Margaret Barnes? I think... Uh, I think she might have, sir, yes. DC Best, Sun Hill. What's happened? I'm looking for a Mrs. Pickard. Mum's just popped out to collect my little sister. Is this about my dad? Is he all right? Yeah, he's fine. He's just at Sun Hill helping us with a few inquiries. Mum will be back in a minute. Right. Do you want to come in? Yeah. My dad hasn't got himself into any trouble, has he? Well, he's been involved in a disturbance, but we're sorting it out. Oh, sorry. Uh, can I get you a drink or anything? No, I'm fine, thanks. Holiday picks? Yeah, it's Umbria, Italy. It's fantastic, isn't it? This yours the place? Oh, no, it's a villa we rent. That's me and my friend Felicity. What's going on? Oh, nothing, Mum. I said to let nobody in. Who are you? I'm a police officer. DC Best from Sun Hill. Your husband's been arrested. Is he all right? He's fine. But he made an allegation about his daughter. Only he told us that she was 13. Yes, that's right. Not Claire. Catherine. You're 13? Listen, we're going to have a little talk here, darling. Can you go upstairs and play? Right, yeah. Catherine, are you acquainted with a man by the name of Rob Langley? Cheers, stop. You got back for your delivery then? Oh, I, yeah, I did. This is D.S. De Costa. Uh, Miss Hardy, I understand that you were here when the assault on Mr. Carter took place. Could you tell us something about it? Well, Mr. Carter was behind the counter. I was out the back seeing to Loretta, my baby. And I heard somebody shouting in the shop. A man or a woman? A um, man. I was coming through. I heard a crash and found Mr. Carter on the floor. Blood coming from his head. Did you see the attacker? He flew out the door and he got a glimpse. Well, did you see what he was wearing, perhaps? Or... I'm not really sure. Right. Um... What about the CCTV? Oh, Mr. Carter must have forgotten to switch it on. He's losing his marbles. <laughs> Should have retired years ago. Excuse me. That's your letter. Right, let's get some uniform down here. Knock on all the doors, check if the neighbours saw anything and see if there's any CCTV on the streets. I don't think Miss Hardy's going to give us much to go on. Well, at least she's clear about being unclear. Roger, is that what you told the super? That you were unclear about what went on between me and Margaret? I told her as I saw it. I answered the questions I was asked. Sarge, let's not make this personal. Ah, 
Catherine, this is Yvonne. She's going to be asking you a few questions. Hello. Hello. Can I come in with her? You know, sometimes in these situations it's easier to actually open up to someone you don't know. How do you feel about that, Catherine? I'd rather do it on my if that's okay. PC Hemingway is a Soviet officer. That means she's trained to help people that may be the victims of sexual assault. She'll be fine. Could you get Mrs. Picard a cup of tea, please? Sure. Thanks. So where did you meet this Rob Langley? At the bowling alley on the high street. When was this? A couple of months ago. We just started talking about music and stuff. And did you tell him how old you were when you met him? No. Why not? You know... He'd have probably run a mile. And I really liked him. So did you go out with him again? To the student union bar where he works? No, they check your ID in there. So, which pubs do you go to? The Pike's Head, mainly. Look, my mum and dad don't know any of this. All of this is between you and me, Catherine. So, did you go drinking with Rob Langley at the Pike's Head? A couple of times. Then he took me to a club. It was a drum and bass night. And do your mum and dad know that? No. Can I have a drink of water? <clears throat> what was Catherine like when you first saw her at the house? Twitchy. She's worried about something. Maybe she was twitchy because she knew that stuff about her going to the pubs was going to come out. Yeah, that and whatever else she's been hiding. She's not exactly little Miss Innocent, is she? She went for a drink with the guy, Gary. That doesn't mean she brought this on herself. Oh, no, of course not, Sarge. There you go. Thank you. The pregnancy testing kit your mum found this morning... It hadn't been used. So what? Well, you're worried enough to buy the test. Isn't there a part of you that would like to be sure? Just so you could put this all behind you? I'm not worried. I, I don't need a test, all right? Okay. You told your dad that something had happened between you and Rob. This thing that happened, when was it? Six weeks ago. After the drum and bass night. We went back to Rob's flat. Well... It's a student house, you know. Was there anybody else in the house? I didn't see anybody, no. Anyway, Rob was smoking gear in that. You mean cannabis? Did you smoke it with him? No, I, I don't do drugs. We were listening to music in his room. And then he... What did he do? He started taking my clothes off. I didn't want to. It wasn't me. Rob made me do it with him. I'm sorry. Well, it's got enough to arrest Langley for rape. Going to be a word against this, isn't it, Sarge? If he did have sex with her, we're certainly looking at sexual activity with a child. Well, she doesn't exactly look like a child when you first meet her. Well, I hardly think that's the point, Gary. Oh, no, I'm just saying. I mean, I doubt forensics will find much anyway. I mean, it's been six weeks. Well, there may be strands of hair still in his room. Not a lot of hoovering goes on in student houses, does it? Thank you.
DS Nixon, DC Best, Sunhill Police. It's about the guy you want to go at me this morning. Robert Langley, I'm arresting you on suspicion of an offence under the Sexual Offences Act. What? You do not have to say anything. Arrested me? He came in here and had a go at me. Offence if you do not mention something which you later rely on in court. Get off me! Just listen to your rights, Mr. Anything Langley. Anything yeah? you do say may be given in evidence. This is a riot. He came in here and had a go at me. Swear, I don't know his fault. I don't know Catherine. Get off! Catherine's father said he found your name in her address book. Have you ever taken Catherine to the Pike's Head? Good pub. Nice and out of the way. I've been to the Pikey a few times, yeah. But not with this Catherine. Do you have a steady girlfriend, Rob? Yeah, I've been seeing somebody for a bit. Tara. What sort of music do you like? Garage? Drum and bass? You were at a drum and bass gig last month, weren't you? The 15th? Hang on, I was there, yeah. But with Tara, not any Catherine. And where did you first meet this Tara then, Rob? Bowling? No, it was in a bar. The Grape and Bottle. Did you go back to her house? No, we always meet up in town. Describe this Tara to us, will you, Rob? She's about five two-ish, long brown hair. Wait up, are you saying that Tara could be this Catherine you're on about? Is this some sort of pet name for her? No, Tara's a name. I make Felicity calls her that and I've got emails from Tara. After the gig, did you take this 13-year-old girl back to your house? Did you force her to have sex with you, Rob? I didn't force anybody. Tara wouldn't say that. She's not 13, she said she was 17. She wouldn't do this to me. I mean, look, right, if she's lied about her name, about her age, then she's one big lie. She can cry rape on me all she likes, but I didn't do it. Right, Yvonne can't get over to the Picards to interview Catherine for about an hour or so, OK? Well, forensics are turning over Langley's house now. Good. Well, what do you reckon, Sarge? Do you think he raped her? Gary, it really doesn't matter what we think, OK? But either way, if he had sex with her, it was sexual activity with a child. To be fair to the guy, Sarge, if he'd lured her off a school bus with a bag of sweets, then yeah, fair enough, he deserves what's coming to him. But if she lied, if she told him that she was 17... Well, let's see what Yvonne can get out of her on that, shall we? You know this mate, Felicity, mm. that Langley mentioned? Well, when I first went round to Catherine's house, she was showing me some holiday photograph here. She said it was of her and her friend, Felicity. Did she? I'll phone Mrs Pickard and see if she knows where to get hold of her. Good idea. short notice but those dates I asked for did you sort them for me what dates the leave I asked for you said you were gonna look at the duties for me we're short of sergeants already this is not a great time June well, with great respect mom it's not a great time for me either I need some time off to sell my house sort myself out oh, all right take your break thank you Sorry to take you out of your classroom, Felicity, but uh, we won't keep you too long. You went on holiday to Italy with Catherine and her parents. Been friends a while? Uh, since we were little. Is she OK? Why isn't she at school? She's fine. Um, she won't be coming in today, but she's OK. Did you meet Rob Langley with her? Uh, yeah. We got talking in that. Do you know a girl called Tara? Catherine told Rob that was her name. We do it sometimes for a laugh. Well, I'm afraid what Catherine said happened to her isn't very funny. She said she went back to Rob's after a night out about a month ago. Yeah, I was there. At the club? And at Rob's. We, we went round to his afterwards. So you stayed at Rob's place that night? Where did you and Catherine sleep? Oh, thank you. Thanks. I'll call you back. Had to go with the super. Well, he clearly thinks that I uh, overreacted with Margaret and lost it, basically. Well, what about Roger? Didn't you dig him uh, out? No, Roger, I mean, Roger's statement didn't help me very much, but then from where Roger was standing, I guess it could have looked like I pushed her. I really think you should go to the super and tell him exactly how Margaret's been behaving. Oh, Terry, please, look. We've had this conversation before, right? And it's too late to change my story. 
because it will look like I'm trying to lie my way out of it. Well, how's it going to look if Margaret goes to a car and says, you pushed her? Look, the super knows you. He trusts you. Let's get it all out into the open so he doesn't think you're hiding something. You think I should get in there before Margaret? Yes. Fine. Margaret, come in. Thank you. You told me that you went to Rob's house on your own. According to your friend Felicity, she was there with you. Yes. I meant it was just me and Rob on our own in his bedroom. So she was in the house on that night? Yes. I didn't want her to get in trouble as well. Her dad will kill her. Catherine... You lie to Rob about your age and your name. And you lie to your parents about the sleepover and about the drinking. Are you telling me any other lies? No. I only lied because I couldn't tell the truth. I'm not with you. If Mum and Dad knew I'd been out drinking, if they knew I'd been mates with him, I thought they wouldn't believe he raped me. I see. I shouldn't have said I was 17. And I, I shouldn't have come back to his house, I know. It makes it my fault, doesn't it? So it was a bit of a party at Rob's that night, was it? Um, no, all his housemates were out. You, um, you said you'd been smoking. What were you smoking? Gear. We just got at the Pike's Head before we went to the club. Did you buy it? Not me, Catherine. She knows people in there. And at Rob's house, you slept on the sofa next to his bedroom. Did you hear anything? What do you mean? Voices. Any kind of a struggle? Did you hear Catherine, you know? Yeah, I heard her. Felicity? What did you hear? You spoke to Superintendent Akaro, didn't you? Yes. He said it could be very serious for you, but that I had to tell the truth. Of course. And what did you say? <laughs> don't worry. Look, we both know that you pushed me, but I don't want you to get into trouble, so I changed my statement and I told the Superintendent it was an accident. Well, good, because that's what it was, wasn't it? That's what we'll tell people. People don't need to know. What other people need to know, Margaret, is that you fell. I didn't push you. Don't worry. I'll stick to the story. And I know that you'd cover up for me if I It's not a cover-up, Margaret. It's not a cover-up. Thank you for caring enough about me to come to the hospital this morning. I knew you'd be worrying about me. I've got the rest of the day off sick. But I'll call you. You've got your number. Catherine, dear next nurse, talk some more to your friend Felicity. What she said now? That you were smoking cannabis at Rob Langley's, that you bought it at the Pike's Head. She's lying. Felicity says that she heard you and Rob in his bedroom, messing about and laughing. She also says that you told her you were going to have sex with him that night. Is that right? I never said that. You know, sometimes you tell a lie, and then you tell another one to cover it up, and another one. Did you miss a period? 
Is that why you bought the pregnancy test? But you were too scared to take it. Am I right? Then Mum found it. And then what happened? I knew Dad would go mental. He'd blame me. I panicked. So I told him Rob forced me. I have to get this clear, Catherine, because this is very important. Did Rob ever force you to have sex with him? But you did have sex with him? Yes, a few times. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. It's all right. Am I in trouble? No. But now this is out in the open, don't you think it would be a good idea to take that pregnancy test? Hi. Hi. Did you speak to the super? Didn't get a chance to. Margaret decided to tell him that it was all an accident. Good. It's a good result. Margaret seems to think so too. In fact, she feels that I owe her one. I should be eternally grateful because she chose not to ruin my career. You didn't do anything. No, I know I didn't do anything, Terry. I mean, I... She's trying to mess with my mind. In fact, I think that she... She wants some kind of power over me. The only power she'll have over you is the power you give her. Yvonne said you were thinking about doing the pregnancy test, Catherine. I'm all right. It came out negative. <sighs> Sorry, Dad. As long as you're all right. Well, Rob Langley clearly didn't rape her, but he did have sex with her. Yeah. However old she looks, she's still a child. He should have known. We'll need a new statement from her, so I'm going to ask you to bring her down to the station as soon as possible. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Mrs. Pickard. Uh, Mum, how are you? Great. First day is DCI, and here I am back on a reopened murder case. Has PC Harmon been told that we need to interview her today? Oh, she's been notified, yeah. As Scott Burnett's former FLO, it's important we talk to her. Thanks, Gina. So, how was Barton Street? I'm fine. I've never felt better. Go on. So this is good news. If she's admitted that she's been lying all along, I'm free to go. Well, it's not quite that simple. I mean, she's 13, but sexual activity with a child is illegal. Look, right, mate. If I admit having underage sex with her without knowing that she was underage, what's the worst that can happen? Well, prison. I mean, I don't know what the maximum is. Prison? The thing is, if you plead guilty now and there's evidence that she lied about her age, then they might be lenient with you in court. You're right. But if you plead not guilty now and they prove that you did have sex with her, then they'll come down on you hard. See, there's this thing called honest belief, yeah? Now, in the defence, someone can say, I honestly thought that she was 17 or whatever. Well, I did. But she's going to turn up in court in a school uniform, isn't she? How's that going to make me look? So you play the same game. Best suit like you've just walked off a wedding cake. That's the game, isn't it? Never been in any trouble before. Well, that'll go in your favour, then. Back here again, Miss Hardy. They told me he got worse, but now they won't tell me anything else. Well, the doctors have explained that he's got a subdural hematoma, which is a blood clot on the brain. He's going to be all right, isn't he? They're doing their best, but in the meantime, do you mind answering a few more questions, just through me? Not being funny, but I've told you everything I can remember already. Oh, I'm sure you have. It won't take long. Anybody local with a grudge against Mr. Carter? You know, any rows in the shop with customers lately? Oh, yeah. He was always getting on people's nerves. 
Like who? Can you get on your nerves, Miss Hardy? No. Well, yeah, sometimes. In what way? All sorts of ways, I don't know. Mr Carter is very ill. And it could be life-threatening. What? Hmm. So if you're trying to protect somebody, like a customer, what happened? He was touching me. I'll do it again if he comes near me. It never stops. It's forever niggling, criticising on and on. His eyes following me. You say that he touched you, yes. I was stacking cans on the top shelf. He put his hand up my skirt. Loretta's sick. I mean, so much debt. I'll, I work all hours for next to nothing. I had one of the cans in my hand, and when he put his hand up my skirt, I just lost it. <laughs> Angela, could you not just have left? He's my landlord as well as my boss. I'm behind with the rent. If I pack in the job, I'll lose the flat. I'm trapped. And he knows it. <laughs> look, look, it's going to be all right. We'll sort it out, okay? We'll sort it out. Really, it's going to be all right. Yeah. Busy, Armand. Have you started to grace us with your presence? Yeah, I'm so sorry about the last few days, Mum, but like I said on the phone, Scott's really been fearing for his safety since Greg Campbell's been released. Yeah, so. I heard of that yesterday. MIT are here, and they will want you for interviews since your shift is finished today. Does that mean they'll want to reinvestigate Scott, too? Well, I imagine so, because he was married to the victim. Now, if I were you, I'd go through all your notes when you were Scott's family liaison officer because MIT will not leave any stone unturned. Mum. You said you wanted to tell us something, Mr Langley. I prepared a statement for you. Shall I read it? No. Tell us in your own words. As simply as you can. Well, I had sex with the girl. Catherine Pickard. Yeah, but I honestly believe when I met her that she was... What was... you did or didn't believe is for the court to look at, Mr Langley. It's not my job to go into why you did it. Do you understand? Sure, yeah. Now, you've admitted a serious offence here. Yeah, but I didn't force her. Whatever her father thinks. It wasn't rape. Well, it'll probably be looked at. We'll get to the exact charge later, Mr Langley. In the meantime, thank you for your um, cooperation and for your statement. Interview terminated at 14.11. Thank you. For your advice. So what's this advice you gave Mr Langley then that he was so thankful for? Well, I just told him, you know, that he was in a corner and that he should come clean. Right. Is that it? Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, Sarge, but I reckon the bloke's got a case. She don't look like a child. She drinks. She smokes. Yeah, but he must have had some doubt about her age, don't you think? Well, you can't ask every girl you meet for a birth certificate, though, can you, Sarge? No. Is there a problem? I need to look at Catherine's personal details. Well, they're on my desk. Why? Yeah, I want to check her date of birth. Got a result, though, didn't we, Sarge? Sarge, it's that statement. What are you doing here? Well, it's okay. It's nothing to worry about. MIT, you want to go over a few things? What things? Well, I didn't get a list. There's a new DCI. Uh, you and Morel? Yeah. Well, she called, said they weren't giving up, and they were determined to find out what happened to Karen. Right. Well, I think they know Greg did it, but they can't crack it. Scott, when you go in there, just be prepared. And what for? They might suspect you again. Don't worry about it, I'll be fine. See you later. See ya.
How'd you get on? Catherine's birthday's the 13th of March. Well, that changes everything. Why so much? Well, because in his statement, Rob Langley admitted they had sex on the 10th of March, three days before her birthday. Right. Which unfortunately means, Gary, she was 12 years old at the time. The Sexual Offences Act was rewritten 18 months ago. Having sex with a child under the age of 13 is now statutory rape. You know, any belief about her age or consent is irrelevant. There's no defence. Well, that's a bit harsh, isn't it? Well, it's the law, Gary. The CPS may want to charge him with rape. And if they do, the maximum sentence is life. Mr. Langley, I've got to tell you this. There's some question over what you'll be charged with. That you said unlawful sex. You said they'd go easy on me. It's a bit more complicated than that now. There's a good chance that you could be charged with rape. I didn't rape her. I didn't force her. No, and she's not saying that you did. Well, then what? You had sex with her three days before her 13th birthday, right? She was only 12. Now, technically, that makes it rape. With a maximum sentence of life. Life? You pulled a stunt on me to get me to admit it. No, it's a new part of the law, right? For you! You must have known all the law! It's all right, it's all right. Look, I wouldn't do that to you. Now, it's not definite and the CPS will decide on the charge. <laughs> she told all those lies! <laughs> I didn't have admitted anything. <laughs> Who'd have believed that? <laughs> You've totally screwed on my life, man. The Burnett murder case was the first time you were tasked as a family liaison officer, is that right? <clears throat> yes, I'd just completed my training. Despite your inexperience, or perhaps because of it, you became very close to Scott Burnett. If you're referring to my personal relationship with him, I kept that completely separate from my role as his FLO. Good. And you logged everything you saw or did or said while you were in that role? Yes, everything. It's all noted in the log. I've read it. It seems extremely thorough. Thank you, ma'am. Did you ever find Scott Burnett evasive about the material facts, where he was when the murder happened, or things about his wife? It wasn't really my role to question him, ma'am. Did you ever discuss details of the murder with anyone outside the inquiry team? What kind of details? Well, the time Karen Burnett was murdered, for example? No. Or the place it occurred? Or the murder weapon? No, we never discussed that. Well, that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you, Mum. You look like someone's just pulled the plug. Why are you still here? I had to cover for the super while he was at a meeting. Seriously, you don't think it'd be better if he knew what was going on with you? Seriously, it'd be much better if you minded your own business, sunshine. So, good night, Mum. Mum. Smithy. We may have a problem, Gina. P.C. Harmon. What's your assessment of her? Well, she's not the sharpest knife in the drawer, you know, but she's conscientious. Good officer. While I was interviewing Scott Burnett, he let slip that he knew the murder weapon was a wheel brace. Now, that information hasn't been disclosed publicly. The only people who knew about it are the officers working the case and the murderer. Scott claimed that P.C. Harmon told him. But she says she didn't tell him or anyone about the weapon. Well, I'd believe her. All right. Thank you, Gina. Ties up a loose end for me. I should never have recommended Honey for family liaison. Well, there is one good piece of news. I've talked to the DPS about the Margaret Barnes incident. They agree. It's an accident in the workplace. So Ramony's off the hook. Oh, yippee. Uh, Roger, would you, do you mind going on ahead, OK, please? Sarge. You OK? This poor woman, Angela Hardy, she's got debts piled up, sick baby, and her boss is sexually harassing her. 
sound very stressful. Yeah, but why couldn't she sort it out before it got to this bitch? I mean, now this huge explosion's taken place and she could be facing charges. Yeah, well, stress can crumble anyone, you know that. I know. Quite easy to be judgmental, I suppose. Well, it's easy to see other people's mistakes. I mean, blind to your own, isn't it? Hmm? You heard what I said. Are you saying that I should follow my own advice? Well, it's usually very good. Why don't you take a break? <clears throat> well, I got, um, holiday owed me. I suppose I could speak to the DI. Well, come on. Let's go and talk to him then. A couple of days away from this place, you won't know yourself, I promise you. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello, mate. How <laughs> <Are> you fit? <laughs> yeah, take me to the boozer. Mr. Burnett, I've just been to your house looking for you. What for? It's not Burnett I'm arresting you on suspicion of murder. Oh, you no, do not come have to on, say this is no. ridiculous. I suggest you take yourself home, P.C. I didn't Harper. do it, honey. Too late, I didn't do it. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when question something which you later rely on in court. Next time on The Bill. If you keep shtong, a man could go down for murder. You watch what you're saying, because I will not have rumour mongering on my shift. You seem to have no regard for professional standards. I think the Met would be a lot better off without you. Oh. Oh.